everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel so if you're new here i am shami i used to be a travel vlogger but since there is a pandemic i'm just sharing whatever i can travel tips itinerary or everything about traveling and the things that i love like korean drama and k-pop so today we are going to talk about how i became a bts army so if you don't know what bts army is army is the name of the fandom of BTS or Bangtan Sonyamdan. So if you want to know how I became a part of this fandom or of this family, just keep on watching and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Okay, let's go. So let's start. I'll be speaking in English because I know there are so many armies around the world so I don't expect Filipino viewers to see my video though because don't get that much of views but I want it to be available for everyone. Okay, so number one, um, well, how did I become an ARMY? Back in 2017, I enrolled to a Korean language um, program or a class and we had this final project before graduating of um, reenacting a Korean drama so we went to a Samgyeopsal place to film Kim Bokju, the, the mukbang part of Kim Bokju, weightlifting fairy Kim Bokju, and I was I even played Kim Bokju. So all throughout the um, film, we have to speak in Korean. So I'll be posting a picture maybe here. Okay, and then after filming, the four of us, like four of my classmates, including me, um, decided to stay at. A milk tea shop beside the Samgyeopsal place and um, someone I think that's EJ someone brought out their laptop and they kept on watching BTS concerts so they keep on I mean all of them know about BTS they know their names and I don't even know them and they keep on talking about um, how RM is so sweaty when <laughs> when he dances and they were talking about their performance and their names and I was thinking like oh my gosh there's too much guys I, I can never remember their names because there are seven of them I did not even attempt knowing their names so back then I was not a k-pop fan I only know EXO um what's his name Dio and Baekhyun because I watched them in Korean drama I think uh, we stayed for we stayed in that uh, milk tea shop for about four hours until the sun went down and they just kept on watching the concert and to be honest I could not relate and I I was not interested and um, they were talking about how BTS already went to the Philippines and they had their concert here and my one of my classmates even attended the two-day concert both VIP and that's very expensive and I, I was just so amazed how how people can be spending this much money for uh, for idols that um, don't even know them so I, I was not judging but I was just so amazed for of how they love these boys okay so that's number one my classmates uh, my Korean language classmates introduced kind of introduced them to me i didn't know that there was like a cold war there's like a war between exo and bts fans back then so um like when they asked me who do you know i just told them exo things like that but yeah there shouldn't be a war between fandoms after that i went home and i don't know why but i kept on watching bts videos on facebook the funny ones yeah that's the next thing that happened lots of funny videos of bts um showed up on my news feed and i kept on watching it and on facebook after watching one video when you scroll up there's another video and i did not stop number three i kept on watching their sad videos as well it's not really sad it's their journey of how they started as rookies and then um, they became somehow successful. They were not that famous that 
up that time yet yeah they were not worldwide famous when i became a fan they were just starting to um to be to get known in other countries it was like crazy because i've been watching their funny and sad videos alternatively because you can't choose it you just keep on watching on facebook until 4 a.m and i was like laughing like crazy because of their you got no jam or bitch bitch you, for, if you're in army you know those those terms um i just kept on laughing and then later i'll be crying like oh poor them yeah, yeah something like that and yeah i started to know their names that's a step because if you already know their names they they are seven that's not um very easy to memorize so if you already know their names you are becoming an army and then i picked my bias so i chose jin because i think i could relate more i heard from somewhere that you somehow pick your bias because you are very similar um jin was born in 1992 same year the new armies might not know it but He's very thoughtful. He kept on cooking for the armies, caring for them. He was even dubbed the, the mom or the mother of BTS because, yeah, he stood like the mother of BTS, taking care of especially their food and Jungkook. So I was touched of how um, he had that responsibility even if I think he was the youngest he's the youngest in their family and he became the eldest in bts although of course he does not show that he's matured but yeah in some ways oh my god i came to know their songs though i'm, I'm not like the other armies that memorize their songs but i kind of I, I can sing them in Norebang. I sang their songs in Korea when I went to Norebang. I sang Spring Day. That's an easy one. Try singing it, try singing it in um, Norebang. People might think that armies fall in love with them because of their songs or because of their music video, but it's not like that. It's like one of the last thing I knew and I admired about them. Their, their performances in MMA and music award shows at the end of the year are so amazing, especially J-Hope and Jimin. And then I picked my bias record. I don't know why, but I, I picked um, I picked Jimin because of the videos that, I, that I've seen. That he's like the sweetest, he cares for everyone, he makes them um, laugh with his cuteness but later on i've changed my bias record so many times it's now j-hope um i don't know um jimin has an annoying side too that you can see in bts in the soup that um bts are somehow annoyed by his um clinginess something like that but he's still cute i wanted to buy their merch so they launched the bt21 yeah like this pen, this is Tata. I have lots of BT21 stuff. And um, I am not a collector. I, I just wanted to buy them. They're cute and I can really use them. So um, when I went to Korea, I went to the BT21 store right away. Um, I'll be putting the link here or the video. Is it right? Or here? I don't know but yeah i'll be putting it there or the link below of my bt21 tour in korea i went to the places they went to i bought lots of bt21 stuff because there was no bt21 in the philippines that time yet and even if we have bt21 here in the philippines it's so so expensive and they do not restock i mean the the things they they sell are the old stocks from korea so if you're looking for your bias character like rj they don't have it anymore they only have shoki and other um things they haven't sold okay so i bought their merch and i went to the places they went to in seoul even if it's so far especially the coffee shop where they shot their run episode i'll be putting a picture here so yeah, I, was, I was just so happy doing that 
I'm an army, but I don't spend that much on them. Um, especially albums. I've never thought I'll buy their album because we have Spotify, we have uh, music applications. Uh, I'm thinking that we don't really need to buy their CDs because I don't have a CD player. But yeah, I bought their album. I think it's in the thumbnail. In the thumbnail, yeah, I bought the Map of the Soul 7 and I was gifted by my cousin Persona album. So the next album, I'm not sure if I'm gonna buy it. I mean, I know it's just to support them, but I'm not that kind of army yet that would be spending much and much much money um i don't even buy the access to watch bts in the soup or their other variety shows that has to be um bought from weavers or v live um that's the thing about the army fandom i know it's bad i know i know i should be paying but um, there are so many generous armies. Um, the Korean armies will be angry about this, but most Filipino armies and other countries' armies are very generous. Um, they will be streaming the concert live or the show live. They'll be buying an access to that, and then lots of people can sh uh, can watch it at the same time. So, um, whenever there is a new show, I I'm not nervous that oh, how can I watch it because I know. I'll be watching it on Facebook or on YouTube though it's kind of difficult to find a, a good one because um, Big Hit is quite quick on bringing them down they delete illegal videos right away so sorry for those who are buying access to these shows but I can't afford it or I choose not to buy them because I mean I love them I love watching them but I'm not in that part of spending too much money on a show, but I buy their merch, so I think that's okay. They're already rich. I have friends. I know lots of people who think BTS armies are toxic and war freak, but not everyone's like that. You shouldn't um, generalize everyone because there are lots of kind armies out there who just look after each other and who just love BTS so much. Also, there are very, very rich armies that bought them lots of gifts before. That's why Big Hit already banned receiving gifts because they're too expensive. Like, imagine armies buying them part of the moon or naming stars after them. So yeah, that's how rich BTS armies are, but I'm not that rich. You know, I think there's nothing wrong with loving someone or, um, admiring a group but um, you should just balance it you can't be too consumed by it Ooh, years have passed and I'm not that crazy on following their shows watching every V live they they have but when I get time I try to catch up and um, I watched BTS in the soup really um, I watched it on time and I really recommend that show because it's so healing. It's so different from the variety shows that I've watched before. Well, I think that's it for this vlog. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any other questions, just leave a comment below and I'll see you in the next vlog. Bye!